Stay tuned for the Billy Martin roast. And I don't know who they roasted. Live from Harrah's Marina Hotel Casino in Atlantic City, it's the Billy Martin Celebrity Roast with your roast master, Alan King. Mickey Mantle. Jeff Altman. Whitey Ford. Larry Bud Melman. Howard Cosell. Freddie Roman. Fred Travelina. And our honoree, Billy Martin. With special appearances by Yogi Berra, Ray Cones, Sammy Davis Jr., Tommy Lasarda, and Frank Sinatra. The following that you hear is done, being done under protest. Of course, I've, they're twisting my arm to say something about Billy Martin. I've said more about Billy Martin than his father or anybody else in his family. And he's not a very funny man, so uh, I, I don't laugh at him all the time anymore. You know what I mean, folks? If you understand what I'm saying, you must be drinking strange booze, where the hell ever you are. <laughs> Have a good time. Billy, salud. Welcome to Harris, Atlantic City. Truly an amazing place. Uh, for those of you out there in television land who've never been to Atlantic City, Every one of these hotels is Fantasy Island. Of course, you walk two blocks from here, it's Beirut. <laughs> <laughs> I want to welcome you to what promises to be a most forgettable evening. <laughs> and I think it's only fitting and proper that we honor a baseball immortal in a gambling establishment. <laughs> Pete told me you were his hero. <laughs> I've known Billy Martin for many years as both boy, man, player, manager, retailer, <laughs> barroom brawler. Ever been at a bar with Billy Martin? Every time he opens up his mouth, he should be arrested for littering. There's an old adage that we only roast the ones we love. Tonight is an exception. <laughs> when they called me about this evening and they said, we want to honor a tribute to Billy Martin, there was a lot of silence. They said, nobody will show up. Someone said, how about a roast? He said, they'll break the walls down. the first citizen of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, George Herbert Walker Bush, President of the United States. Let me just say, it is a pleasure to be here tonight. I am that man, and I will roast our honor E tonight. No other place in the world can a president be introduced by a king. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan King.
Thank you. Good to see you. Our honored guest is a man who has been through a lot, but has not yet fully recovered from his charisma bypass, and we wish him well tonight. <laughs> you know, I'll never forget the first time I saw this guy on Saturday Night Live with that arrow through his head, you know, <laughs> with, the, with the white hair playing that guitar. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. President uh, I don't know how to say this, but uh, I'm afraid it's not Steve Martin we're roasting tonight. It's not Steve Martin? <laughs> well, who is it? Well, let's just say it's a very controversial baseball figure. Pete Rose? <laughs> Pete's a good friend of mine. I'm gonna be on your bet your life soon, uh, huh? No, Mr. President. <laughs> I'm sorry to keep doing this, but it's not Pete Rose, but his last name does begin with an M. Not him either? Well, who is it? A guy with, oh, with a guy with initial M. Uh, Mickey Mantle. No, no, sir, Mr. President, no, sir. Uh, you see, it's Billy Martin we're roasting here tonight. Who? You know, Billy Martin. Oh, Billy Martin. Sure. One of my closest friends. Yeah, you must be him, because you're not like on King. <laughs> yeah, he's the guy that took a shot at me in the bathroom. <laughs> Now, oh, Billy, <laughs> that was a good one, wasn't it, huh? <laughs> now, Billy, just look at me as another George telling you you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> you know, People magazine recently asked in a poll, what is Billy Martin? <laughs> I'll tell you what Billy Martin is. He's Morton Downey Jr. in a baseball cap. That's what he is. <laughs> Billy, of course, is an optimist. All night he's been looking for the Steinbrenner table. I don't think he'll be finding it. <laughs> but Billy's always ready to help, and I have a way for you to help me, Billy. Would you call up Phil and ask if the money store could lend me a couple of trillion for a few years? <laughs> kind of help me out. Now, Alan King told me, you've got to be hip, you've got to be today to be on a dais. Would I work on some things that are different for George Bush to do for my good friend Billy here? Mr. President, thank you. So I've got some impressions I'm going to do for you. I know that's strange, Alan, but here's one you're going to love. A Syrian hailing a cab in the Garmin Center. <laughs> you people go to work, I do this. <laughs> Here's one for my good friend, Freddie Roman. Myron Cohen at the signing of the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> Mr. Hamilton, if I told you once, I told you a thousand times, I don't co-sign for nobody. <laughs> And so, in closing, because there are so many people up here for this man tonight, tonight, he is that man. And I say, <laughs> let's salute Billy Martin for the type of man he really is, a cab driver who got lucky. <laughs> The White House, Washington, July 7th, from the President of the United States. I am delighted to be part of this special tribute to Billy Martin. As a matter of fact, I recently asked Barbara if she could name anyone who has contributed more than Billy Martin to making this a kinder, gentler nation. 
<laughs> she rattled off 2,693 names before I could stop her. <laughs> but it's giving of oneself to others that matters. Billy, and that's where you've excelled. You've given your right eye, your left jab, why? <laughs> you've even given your whole self to George Steinbrenner six times. <laughs> yes, Billy, your contributions have been many. Thank you. You can be sure we'll be thinking about you next time we're in Kennebunkport, sitting by the fire, roasting marshmallows. <laughs> With sincere best wishes for an enjoyable evening, signed, George Bush. I want you to have that. <laughs> Our next guest has been called articulate, eloquent, a journalistic gadfly, and an iconoclast. <laughs> and depending on whom you talk to, he's also been called some things that you wouldn't read on the wall in a men's room. <laughs> I've known him for 40 years. I've always found him to be fair, generous, and above all, honest. Ladies and gentlemen, the man that says it like it is, Howard Cusack. Thank you very much, Alan. I thought you were introducing Mickey Mantle. <laughs> Through all of my life, Billy Martin has stood tall, and I care about him deeply. I want you all to know that, and that's why I'm here tonight, because the man stands up for where it is, and he has always done exactly that. I wish I could say the same for Mantle, <laughs> who threw probably the weakest pitch I've ever seen <laughs> to Frank Howard. And thank God, the ball barely escaped the clutches of Whitey Ford, and it bounded back and somehow was held to a double but it was probably the worst pitch I've ever seen, which was the only kind Mickey could hit in those years. <laughs> and and uh, I never thought much of Ford either. <laughs> so I've lived with these mediocrities through all of the years. I want to tell you something. It's been one of the great privileges of my life to have shared their careers with them to have known them as my friends, and especially the man who caught the pop fly from Jackie Robinson at Ebbets Field in Brooklyn. He's never done anything since. <laughs> You're all very privileged tonight to be with these great people, and they are indeed America's heroes. Alan King is something else again. <laughs> He is not a difficult act to follow, but that's always been his problem. Back at Boys High in Brooklyn, 16 fights, and then the final one, and he got knocked out, which he deserved. And thank you all so very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. And these are some wonderful people. Thank you, Howard. I'm sure you're all aware of, of uh, the w remarks in, that I made during the introduction. I called them generous and fair and honest. You notice I left out funny. <laughs> Eat your heart, Alan. <laughs> Says here, an original comedian. He didn't get to the top by stealing material. He didn't get to the top by imitating others. He didn't get to the top by stepping on others, which I gather are the reasons he never got to the top. <laughs> this kid's crazy. A favorite of the David Letterman show and a Tonight Show, Jeff Altman. Ah, 
Mantle, Howard Cosell, Mickey Mantle, Whitey Ford, and Jeff Altman. Sure. <laughs> I guess I've known about Billy Martin ever since I was a kid growing up in Syracuse, New York, uh, back in the 50s. I watched him play, watched him manage, but most of all, I watched his unique approach to baseball. So when they asked me to come here tonight to honor this man, I pretty much said, no thanks. <laughs> Actually, I'm very honored to be included here at this prestigious event. You should. Where, <laughs> <laughs> Where else in one evening could you honor a man like Billy Martin and then get right out to free cocktails and nickel slots? <laughs> I've been appointed tonight, folks, as kind of the postmaster of the event. I've been sent telegrams and letters, which we've had to sort of call out the good ones. I've decided <laughs> to present them here tonight for your edification. Places and people from all over the country are coming in. Believe it or not, former President Richard Nixon writes in. <laughs> Dear Mr. Martin, I have long been an admirer of your work. You have certainly brought honor and dignity to Italian Americans everywhere. Pat and I send our best and hope that one day you and Jerry Lewis can reconcile. <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield wrote it. Hey, I'll tell you, you know, rough, really rough. Congratulations, Billy. I'll tell you, you know, our lives are kind of similar, right? When I was a kid, you know, I loved baseball, but I got no respect. I'll tell you, no respect at all. In fact, my dad's first gift to me was a bat, except two days later it flew away. But I want to tell you, it's rough. No respect. <laughs> Carl Carlson. Name doesn't mean anything to you, but of course, to Billy, it means a lot. It's one of his old drinking buddies in Binghamton, New York, where he spends a lot of time. I'm reading this directly. This is what he handed me. Billy? Billy, can you hear me? Listen, could you see if I left my shoes over at your place and send me back that 10 spot, buddy, or I'll sink you like a three foot putt? You have fans all over the country, people who love you, Billy. Uh, fighters. Mike Tyson spoke to me about you the other day. My, Mike Tyson's quite an amazing guy, and only 15 years old. <laughs> Who's going to be the guy that finally comes along and knocks out Mike Tyson? Big fan of yours, Billy. My name is Leonard Moon, and I don't have the brains of an ice cube. <laughs> I have fought Larry Holmes and even his brother, Mobile Holmes. <laughs> Spell relief? I don't know. I have loved you, Billy. I have loved you ever since you were with the Bronx Bombers. And you were awful good on second base, Billy. You learned how to tag people real good. And then you kept that off awful good as a manager. You went on to manage the Minnesota Twins. And I love the Minnesota Twins. But I have never seen them both together. <laughs> Your record, Billy, in the last year was 64 wins and 56 losses, and that was just against your teammates. <laughs> last night, I just finished his new book, and I have loved it. It's a, his own book on psychology. It's called I'm OK, You're KO. <laughs> Speaking for my generation, I just want to say these guys put on a hell of a show for so many years, and we love you. We really do. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may be allowed in a roast to introduce the greatest Southpaw that ever lived, Whitey Ford. That's a, quite an honor, Alan. Uh, from this day, is not to say Sandy Koufax was the best pitcher you ever seen. <laughs> I want to just tell one story. It's a, it's a story that I think will tell about our friendship, the three of us. Back in the 50s, Mickey and I used to go hunting down in Kerrville, Texas for deer. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, Hamilton Wilson, owned a 20,000 acre ranch there. Mickey, Billy said, why the hell don't you invite me to go hunting? So one year we says, okay, Billy, you're going hunting with us. So we meet 
We meet in Dallas at Mickey's house. Mickey had a van, and we drove nine hours from Dallas, Texas, to Kerrville, Texas, which is right on the borderline of Mexico. Mm -hmm. About an hour before we got there, Billy fell asleep in the back of the van. So Mickey and I, when we got to the ranch, we, uh, we get out, and we went in to see Mr. Wilson, and he says, where's Billy? You said you were going to bring Billy Martin. Well, he says, he's sleeping in the van, but when we're through hunting, we'll bring him in. He says, okay. So as we're walking, he says, we'll see you later. As we're walking out, Mr. Wilson says to Mickey, Mickey, do me a favor. I have a mule out in the corral, and I would really, he's 28 years old, he's dying. Would you shoot him for me? And Mickey says, I don't want to shoot your goddamn mule. He says, so he says, please, he says, you'll do me a favor. I don't have to get the vet from town to come in and give him a needle. It costs me $100. Mickey says, all right. So we're walking back to the van, and Mickey says to me, he says, let's have some fun with Billy. <laughs> so we go back to the van, and we shake. We get in the van, and we shake Billy and wake him up. And Mickey says to him, Billy, can you believe this son of a gun? We drive nine hours from Dallas, and now he's not going to let us hunt on his ranch. With that, Mickey opens the window, and he shoots that goddamn mule right between the eyes. <laughs> Down he drops. We hear, out of the back window, we hear, bang, bang, bang. We turn around, we say, Billy, what are you doing? He said, I got three of his cows. <laughs> I, uh... I think that story just uh, tells what, what good friends the three of us are. <laughs> uh, and Billy, I've always admired. I, you know, I, I just love Billy and Mickey. And, and, uh, and Billy was a good second baseman. I just said good. <laughs> he was a good hitter. He was a great manager. But I... But what he done best was to be your friend. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you Ronnie. Behind Billy Martin was a great man. Billy's idol, his first baseball manager. The man who taught Billy Martin everything he knows, and I hope you're satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> been affectionately referred to in baseball circles as Attila the Hun. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bud Melman. Good evening, baseball fans. Yes, it's true. I was Billy's first manager. In fact, I taught Billy all of the finer points of the game, how to turn the pivot, how to go the other way with two strikes, and how to spike all four infielders during a home run trot. <laughs> Billy Martin was a true lover of the game of baseball. He didn't play for money or fame like today's player. The sound of the bat cracking a cactus helmet, the wail of an infielder moaning in pain after a good clean slide. That's what Billy played for. As a manager, Billy was just as aggressive. He didn't believe in the intentional walk, for instance. If he wanted to put a guy on base, he'd just tell the pitcher to bean him. Some people think Billy's image was bad for baseball. I resent that. Billy loved the game and fought for, fought for its integrity. Who can forget the time he punched out Lena Horn for forgetting the words to the national anthem? <laughs> you know, everybody gives Casey Stengel the credit for molding Billy, but I taught him things that take a lifetime to learn like how to get suspended with pay, how to kick water on the empire during a rain delay, how to use your fame and influence to pick up fabulous babes. <laughs> sure, I was tough to play for, but I only had three rules. Play hard, play smart, and if you're gonna get hurt, try and take somebody out with you. That was Billy's credo then, and we still teach it to our kids. 
Today, it's not whether you win or lose. It's how much you make the other team pay for the victory. Good night. <laughs>
You're a great guy. You're a true friend. And thank God you're our brute says. Good luck. Have a good night. I know that everybody there is going to love you, Billy. You are a tremendous person. God bless you, and I hope you enjoy many, many years of good health and happiness. You deserve them both. Good luck to everybody. I know you were touched by Tommy's words. You didn't know that he was drinking at the time he made this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, a lot of funny notes in front of me for the introductions. As you all know, obviously, this is a roast. But I could... I could not make fun anyway of this guy. As a comedian, it would, like, be making fun or being disrespectful of Chaplin. In music, it's Mozart. In art, it's Picasso. And in baseball, it's Mickey Mantle. standing ovation I've had since I got out of bed a while ago. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe I'm getting this chance. I mean, this, uh, Billy, uh, first time I ever met Billy uh, was like in 1950. And I was a rookie. I was 18 years old, and the Yankees uh, take all their rookies to a, uh, the best rookies. <laughs> oh, some of us was better than the real guys, I'm not. <laughs> no, anyway, uh, they, took, they took us to uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and that's the first time I ever saw Billy. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't believe, it's the first time I ever saw a guy that had a nose bigger than a ball cap. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, uh, he had, you ain't gonna believe this, but he had an operator. He had, <laughs> they traded Billy in 1957 because he was a bad influence on me and Whitey. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but in 1956, I led the league in everything. I mean, I, I hit like, what, 52 homer, triple crown year. The year that they traded Billy, I hit 365, but Ted Williams hit 388, and they said I didn't have a good year, so. <laughs> but anyway, I would like to say one thing. This is the only man I know in the world who can hear somebody giving him the finger. <laughs> Somebody be, somebody be sitting in the back of the room laughing, and he'll say, they're laughing at us. <laughs> I'd just like to say before I leave, this is my two best friends. I've got uh, four boys, four brothers, my whole family. I wouldn't trade any of them for these two guys right here. This is my brother, so is that. I mean, uh, we had more fun. I could probably still be playing if it wasn't for these two guys. But... <laughs> I surely wouldn't have had to quit at 18 or whatever. Well, how old was I? I was 36, Howard? 37. Anyway, I'd just like to say it's, it's been a privilege being here and having this much fun. I'm, I've had a great time. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. waiting for this introduction. What can you say about Yogi Berra? That Yogi Berra hasn't said worse. 
It ain't over till it's over. If you can't imitate a man, don't try to copy him. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you, Fred. <laughs> but of all the things that Yogi has said, I've, I found this in a story. It's my favorite. He was once asked by a fast food cook if he wanted his pizza cut in eight slices or 12 slices. And Yogi said, you better make it eight because I don't think I could eat 12 slices. <laughs> You can't make that up. <laughs> One of the all-time greats, number eight, Yogi Berra. Hi, I'm Yogi Berra. I wish I could be there, Billy, but I think you got three guys over there that's going to really roast you real good. That's Vicky, uh, Mickey and Whitey and uh, Howard, Cosell. Howard Cosell and Alan King. Alan King. <laughs> <laughs>